just jump right in. Um, I would love to maybe just start with some intros. If you could maybe just tell us a little bit about, you know, who is J Dave Baczynski and, and, you know, just tell us a little about yourself. Yeah. Uh, so my name's Dave Baczynski. I'm a professional skateboarder. Um, over the last five years, I've been taking a drone and shooting visuals of all my friends and editing those lines of them skating to loop forever. Um, on the side of that, I'm a woodworker, uh, designer, and builder. That's, that's amazing. Such an incredible, <laughs> yeah, such an incredible, like, mixing of skills i'd love to know maybe just a little bit more about like personal journey from going from like professional skateboarding to visual art and woodwork like what did things look like before roll forever existed um so i grew up in massachusetts and the winters got me as a skateboarder i wanted to skate every day so i did i would drive down to florida san francisco and I ended up being in Los Angeles for like 12 years and just skating nonstop. Uh, being a professional skateboarder, it's like during the winter, you're out in the streets and then summertime hits and it's all contest. So it was constantly like bound during the summer and then like winter times hit or winter time would hit and I'd just be kind of hanging out around friends. And back in 2015, I started cutting up my skateboards and making little photo frames for Christmas gifts. And uh, a good friend invited me to a gallery to sell these little photo frames because I was shooting a lot of film. And I was like, damn, this would be cool to just raise money for back home. So I started just making all these like little woodworking projects and raising money for where I grew up back in Lowell, Massachusetts. And that was the beginning of like Shape 3. So it's like all woodworking, kind of making like household furniture and like photo frames um getting random and even making canoe paddles and just kind of whatever hits you know whatever my mind like sees at the time like even just buying like little knickknacks at thrift stores and replacing little handles on like an old coffee grinder and all those little fun things so yeah it, it, it's been a journey <laughs> That's really cool. No, that's that's such an interesting way to think of like the reuse of skateboards and like the fact that like they do break and like they, you know, having a, a artful way to sort of like, I don't know, that's such an, a cool, interesting. I remember like when I played Tony Hawk as a kid, like the skateboard breaking was always my favorite part, <laughs> but it's it's cool. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's really cool to hear about what you're doing with it. Um, that's actually a perfect transition into next question. Um, about how just kind of curious how skateboarding influenced the transition into into art and just sort of what what drew you to combine those passions um into creative projects i think um just visually like a bird's eye view is just amazing like i think even hopping on a plane and all the traveling like i just like would always look out the window and i'd be like flying out of la you can just see all of the valley and that's where i was living i was like oh i hiked that peak i got to that peak and just something about like shooting a visual from um, a bird's eye view perspective and always being in front of a camera fisheye, it's just such a different landscape and like zooming out and showing all those elements of like what's going on in the surrounding area. So for me, I think it's just, it, it, people are like, oh, you're making art. But I think it's like, I'm just hitting record and filming my friends and kind of searching out these unique locations that are like have some kind of geometry going on or like there's just like i don't know that setting that catches the eye that's really like what i'm trying to do is just find these visual pleasing places like when I, when i film something i want it to be that something that would want to be or excuse me, <laughs> scratch that <laughs> i i want to make something that when you walk in a room you're like where is that you know something that's eye catching i don't want to put out anything that's like not visually pleasing to the eye um for me it really goes into the editing process and i think it's more about the skater that's involved is like the real picture so the yeah sorry i completely got lost in the rabbit hole of even the question now <laughs> no that's fantastic that's that's actually a really great sort of um segue into roll forever i'd love to maybe just hear you talk about that a little bit how it started and also where you're at in the process because it's an ongoing project if i understand yeah um roll forever was an idea that i was like how can i make something that's visually pleasing and like 
to bring it back, like when COVID hit, I lost my woodworking shop and I ended up being back in Massachusetts and I had the drone and all my friends, you know, we weren't really skating together because we were around family and it was that, that time frame. And I ended up having the drone and I just put it up at the skate park and I was like, oh, it's visually like I, I'd find all these like cool little angles. And then when I got into Web3 in the art space, I was like, what could I make that like would be cool? And I was on, I had just recently moved to San Diego and a lot of the skate parks are transition. So there's all these different bowls and shapes and that was the scene and it hit me that i was like if i could make a line loop forever that would be so awesome and that's like kind of where roll forever began began was with trying to film the friends so steve cab um was the first skater over at alga norte skate park he did a line in the pool and it looped forever and i i basically was sitting there editing and like the idea is the skater has to do the line two times in a row but mimic that line and ride over the exact same spot. So it was like, I don't know if it's gonna work. Like the real process is the magic and the editing of getting that line to loop seamlessly, but did they ride over the same place? Like doing that line twice, they're really comfortable in the first one, but the second one they're exhausted and their arms are like up in the air trying to get that momentum and get back to the square one. And it's like, a lot of them don't loop. So behind the scenes, it's really me editing but i think it's about the skater that's involved and that's what i'm trying to do is bring together like the the pioneers that have paved the way for skateboarding like steve cab he invented the caballero and like was the first uh person to have a pro model shoe on vans like the wow. history of skateboarding just runs deep and like yeah just even like bringing the best of this generation it, it, it's awesome like last week i or two weeks ago, I filmed Tate Carrer, and I I knew he was amazing. And then, like, after we got done filming a line, I saw in my story that he was, like, over in Australia with Tony Hawk. Like, he just got on Birdhouse, and he, like, shut wow. down the mall. And I was like, damn, two weeks before. Like, I had no idea that that was happening. And it's like, I knew I was ahead of the curve, you know? Um, yeah, no, that's such a beautiful way to tell those stories too and just like it it's such a beautiful not only like a moment for community and also just capturing like literally a piece of, of history that like we yeah. are experiencing right now that's so magical yeah it, so it's cool. been such a fun ride so this has been like two years in the making and it, it's interesting releasing these but for getting collectors involved it's always interesting because it's like no one in skateboarding has a twitter account so putting these out i kind of let the world decide its price and uh was very grateful tyler hobbs is a skateboarder as well and um he ended up buying into the first one and it's kind of snowballed in where it kind of he he gave me a little uh more presence within the space being a collector back into our 2021 and it's just been yeah one pool at a time and it, it's been an awesome ride <laughs> that's amazing no that's that's and i love that that like it's so full circle like uh no pun intended but like the the <laughs> idea of like community like bringing in and like lifting each other up that's that's so dope i'd love to know i'd love to know especially like you mentioned a little bit but like i'd love to know what what sort of challenges did you run into for this project what was i mean beyond just like the ultimately hard challenge of getting a perfect seamless loop but anything <laughs> else that uh stands out um trying to get 50 skaters to set up a digital wallet <laughs> fair i think uh just getting i mean skateboarders just want to be free and skate you know when you, when you tell them like it's funny a lot of them like i'll, I'll be like yeah, you got to do the line twice so they'll film they'll get in the pool I'll, I'll hit record they do the line they hop out of the pool and i'm like no 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 you got to do it like twice in a row like in the same exact record time frame uh and, and it's a lot it's like a different puzzle piece to figure out to get back to the same trajectory of like where the pool corners will make it get back to square one it's really hard to figure out so it, it's fun getting out and filming those with skaters that don't skate pools um a lot of the friends like just recently like chris jocelyn he just made it into the olympic qualifying so he'll be 
yeah basically uh he's a street skater and he doesn't skate pools at all so having him part of this collection was just so awesome because it's just putting the best to do it out of their element and i love that kind of um side of things but um yeah it, it, yeah <laughs> that's awesome no that is so cool and it's it's amazing the fact that like you're able to pinpoint i mean i guess you're so you're so involved in the community as a skater yourself like it just seems like you're so able to like pinpoint these these skaters that are doing such amazing things like just in general that's that's such a powerful I, I think there's something to be said about your own curation of this too that's really powerful it keeps it fun i mean for skateboarding like we all just want to run wild i mean having a hard time getting skaters out too like it's really hard with these guys being so busy you know traveling to all these contests like and of course all the people that i really want to get involved are doing these olympic qualifying contests right now or they're out in the streets or they're across the world so for me like i mean there's only going to be 100 pool lines and like the first two years of putting these together was the first 50 pools that were filmed. So it took two years to film that. And I really want to take my time for these next, I guess, 40 something. I think we're at line 57 right now. And it's like, wow, for me, I want to curate it right. And that's kind of the next chapter is taking these next, you know, two to three years and watching what skateboarding forms. Cause I mean, we're seeing kids that are like eight years old in the olympics right now and it's like the trajectory of um just consistency and pushing the bar like there's still stories to be told like i think the oldest streets or the oldest skater in roll forever is dave duncan and he's been skating for like 53 years and he was skateboarding with clay wheels like back in like the 60s and wow. then right now just recently, uh, Julian Aguilar is 13 years old and he's unbelievable on a skateboard. He's like, I want to say to skaters, like he's the next Nyjah. Like he's grinding, you know, 18 rails and he's part of France working with the Olympics right now. And it's like, he's only 13. And then you have Dave Duncan that's like, you know, 60s. So it's cool to have that like different range of skaters. Like I kind of want to bring the mix of everyone um into this collection and just yeah kind of yeah unique pools and do it right what an amazing range that's it's I, you can't say that for all sports too like where it's like that's that's really cool that's really unique um i would love to understand a little bit more um about just sort of like the blockchain integration of, of this project and like it, you you've already kind of called it out like it's so interesting you know working with with skaters i imagine kind of similar to working with artists in general like similar to herding cats you know everyone's creative brain up in the sky I, so it's so interesting blockchain seems like such a like uh like almost a, a, in opposition to that i'm i'm so curious how how did you discover it where did you see it uh that sort of inspired you to want to work with blockchain and and where do you sort of see the the future of of this collection going yeah i mean blockchain is such a powerful amazing opportunity in this digital sector of where we're headed and um it took me a while to grasp uh for me i really got introduced to just crypto and it, it made sense uh but ethereum it took me a while to grasp that concept that we could tie artwork um it could be real estate deeds all these different things to a token um i learned through Kevin Rose in DC Investor, there was modern uh, podcast called Modern Finance, and that put me into the rabbit hole of NFTs. Um, I think the future is going to be digitally connected. That's where we're all headed, and it's just early days. And um, I think what really got me was I just started collecting. I found out. Um, about the NFT space and got into Hen, uh, which was the Tezos ecosystem. And I just saw all these amazing artists doing cool stuff. And I was like, I want to support that. I want that in my collection. I got the yeah. bug and just started collecting. Uh, mostly, I think what really got me was generative art. The fact that you had to write a code and have an algorithm to produce these amazing artworks. And that really just like hit me where I was like, damn, that's cool. Like 
you, you, it, it's a freedom that everyone can write code and it's free to do, but it's coming up creative with these algorithms and making these cool projects come about. And I wanted to participate in that. The fact that I could hit buy and get one of those pieces at a randomized generative mint was just too cool to me. So FX hash really got me. I was there from day one. And uh, yeah, just, just blockchain in general. I think it'll be uh, awesome to see these rollouts between the music industry and gaming. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> no, that's I totally seconded that that idea of like accessibility and, and anyone being able to do it from anywhere is such a such a powerful thing that's we've seen kind of across the board. But I love yeah. to hear that it makes so much sense for this project. It's such a cool integration. Um, yeah, yeah I, let's. Uh, I think sorry, the fact that you having like 100 pools and just like putting these pieces on chain, like it was cool. Like even recently, like Steve Cab, I'm like, he's the first one. And it's like, that was one of my favorite skaters, but he's like, uh, a, he's, that's probably the first piece of him that will ever go on chain for as a skateboarder, you know, like putting your favorite skateboarders on chain. That's awesome. <laughs> what a crazy concept. No, that's so cool. Um, okay, cool. Going into um, the locations and like how you picked the pools. I'd love to know, how did you, how did you determine which pool? How did you determine which pool at a time? <laughs> I mean, I, it's kind of awesome just looking at it as like a building perspective. Like they're all different shapes, you know, like moving to San Diego, the skate scene is known for transition and all that. So it worked out perfectly. Like I was in Los Angeles for 10 years and then moving to the southern side, <clears throat> it was just filled with so many different pools. So I kind of made a map and I started looking throughout the U.S. at all these different pools and kind of just like bookmarking them and I'm just taking my time and I, I did a trip up to Washington and met up with a good friend Kelvin Kowalski he's like the real core building scene um is like grind line and they're all up in the northwest and the parks are just unreal like they're just huge and um they have some of the biggest concrete bowls so it was really awesome to get up there and just experience that rawness because a lot of the parks down in excuse me <laughs> a lot of the parks down in southern california are like beautiful but up in the northwest they're really raw because of the the season so the weather and the concrete is just really rough and like just the builders up there it's like a different mentality they're just full skate rats and they just make really like just raw bowls like they're deep and they're like huge it's like they're a piece of art in their own so it's cool to kind of get up there and experience that because it was all new for me um but just worldwide like I i'm so excited to just explore and see what's out there I, I saw like i think somewhere over in tokyo um one of the artists made they put something in the concrete so it glows at night and i'm like what like just like oh i want i want to capture that you know but just like i really haven't got to explore throughout the united outside of the US. Um, I, I'm, I'm always traveling to Puerto Rico. I'm actually flying there tonight. So one of them was my good friend. Uh, I think it was the eighth one, Alexis Rivera. He's an amazing skateboarder. And he actually fought through cancer. And just to be able to skate with him and put him within the collection, he's just such a huge inspiration within Puerto Rico and his story and just uh, there's an old bowl back in the 60s that they built right in San Juan and it's right on the water and his his pool is the only one to have like water outside of the pool and it's just continuously looping and it's beautiful so like I just want to find these yeah bowls all throughout the world and slowly build it out wow what a badass and and what a cool yeah I love that that's awesome yeah Alexis and, and like cool. <laughs> so cool and it's also just cool like watching the watching the roll forever loop and just like seeing all of these different it's the 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 phrase like the architecture of skate pools i've never i've never thought of that as a thing like architecture of bowls and how like just they're all so unique and like there's some that have these beautiful like tags on them and that are just like beautiful colors and some that are very minimal it's just like the yeah. range of of what you captured is so cool and it's it's just Thank you so it's, much. it's inspiring uh, 
yeah. they're building like if they're building we're skating <laughs> you know that's awesome that's so cool i'd love to know um just sort of a little bit about um like future directions and sort of um talking a little bit about just the future of, of roll forever um how many more skaters are on your list and um are there projects beyond roll forever that you're thinking about cooking on excited about Oh, my mind is all, it's all over the place with this. Like I, I have so many pieces that I want to like incorporate with woodworking in mm -hmm. the skaters that are involved. I've been like taking their boards and I'm like, what's the angle, you know? Like I'm excited to kind of release these in a small series, like I was saying, like curated. Um, so moving forward, I have up to 59 films and when I first released, released the collection, Steve Cab was number three. And he invented the Caballero, which is a fakey 360. So his first line was three in the Roll Forever collection. And his next line will be the 60th. So I'm putting together a Legends curated series with, I filmed Lance Mountain, Eddie Algara, Steve Cab, and there's two more skaters, which I won't name but I'm gonna bring them together and do a release of five of this Legends collection. I don't know when I'm gonna do it because I still have to film the other two. Um, so for me, I, I have up to 59 film, film, and uh, I'm gonna just slowly build it out. I'm excited to, yeah, put the puzzle pieces together and uh, kind of start filling even out more. Um, afterwards uh to release more because it's just like i don't know when i'm gonna do it but uh yeah that's kind of the next chapter of roll forever um other than that yeah filming for my last video part full length it's been like three years working on it and it's actually my 20th part so this milestone is it's kind of wild my board sponsor actually ended up going bankrupt under a distribution so oh, no. I, had 12 years of graphics and so many boards put out into the world but i have all these boards that are blank so for this part i've been filming these visuals of tricks that i'm filming for the video part from a bird's eye view and from down below so when the part comes out i'm gonna try to have an art gallery and have these artists paint the boards and when you tap the board with your phone you'll see the trick that was done from the part in a visual way. Um, so I'll send you over a video so you can kind of intertwine it into these pieces. Cause yeah, we're, we're out in the streets and it's beautiful. Like filming these pools, I love it. Like we're backyards, we're exploring, doing these missions throughout the world, but being in the streets and just getting like in there, like while businesses are closed and just finding unique spots, it, it's been awesome. So this is kind of like my next chapter. Um, within skateboarding is trying to figure out where uh, maybe I'll start a brand or maybe I'll hop on a good friend's uh, board spot or have a new board spot. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. No, it's just like, it's so much opportunity and so much to come. I, I love that. That's really, really awesome. Um, and yeah, I I think we're, I'm kind of all out of questions, but I just, I'm really excited to, to release this physical, um, piece with you or later this week and um yeah is there anything else you sort of wanted to call out or or talk about before we kind of wrap up Nate, i'm so psyched to have roll forever part of uh infinity objects like it, it just flows so awesome i have it right here next to my computer and it's like the fact that they loop forever and it's just seamlessly like having all the friends involved it's awesome so yeah thank you for making this all happen 